Wrestling has always had an interesting and slightly bizarre relationship with Christmas. Back in the territory days, Christmas night would mean a packed house filled with babyface wins to send the crowd home happy. We're far from those days now, and Christmas themed gimmicks have gotten more elaborate and frankly awful as time has passed. Here are a few stories from wrestling's ghost of Christmas past. That's me, if I wasn't being clear enough. WWE once had an evil version of Santa Claus, because of course they did. On December 17, 1995, WWE presented In Your House 5 Seasons Beatings from Hershey, Pennsylvania. In one of the most bizarre moments I think I've ever seen, Savio Vega heads to ringside with Santa Claus, who is throwing presents out to the crowd. They're interrupted though by the devious million dollar man. Ted DiBiase goes on a rant about how Santa isn't real, despite Santa standing right in front of him, with Savio protesting that he is. Eventually, the Santa in the ring attacks Savio from behind, as he and DiBiase put the boots to him. While this is happening, Jerry Lawler is gleefully shouting that Santa has been bought by the Million Dollar Man. Which isn't all that surprising, as he likely booked stuff weirder than this in Memphis, but more in Memphis later. The evil Santa would make a couple more appearances, but would never be seen again after the holiday season ended. At least he got a longer run than the gobbledygooker. After this shocking betrayal of Savio Vega, and every child on earth, Santa would undergo a drastic makeover. Gone was the long white hair and the thick beard, in its place shorter, darker replacements. His costume was also changed from the classic red and white look to red and black. He looked like the bad guy in the Home Alone straight to video sequel. Perhaps most pointlessly, his name was changed to Santa Claus, with an X and a K. As noted, Xanta would have a short run on WWE television, but one more strange fact lies in who the wrestler who played the character was. Prior to this character, John Reckner had been an enhancement talent for WWE. He'd also had a run in Jim Cornette's Smoky Mountain Wrestling. After playing Xanta, Reckner would go on to become ECW's hardcore chair swinging freak, Balls Mahoney. Though he is no longer with us after sadly suffering a heart attack in 2016, Reckner's run as Balls would become what he was most famous for, and thankfully, not for being the evil Santa. I mentioned that we'd be getting back to Memphis, and here it is, because in 1992, Jerry Lawler actually did book what might be an even stranger character with an even more famous wrestler under the hood. Jerry Lawler once booked, now wait for it, the Christmas Creature. The character was actually the idea of Lawler's son, Kevin, who also ran some shows in the area. He approached the recurring character of this channel, a young Glenn Jacobs who would go on to be Kane. Kevin sent him pictures of a swamp monster looking costume equipped with tinsel and other Christmas decorations. Kane claimed that he wasn't thrilled with the idea, but he had nothing else going on at the time, so took the booking. The final full body suit would actually be made by Kane's mother, which right away reminds me of when Homer Simpson dressed Lisa as Florida. Kane has also noted that the costume had working lights thanks to a hidden battery pack. Unlike Santa Claus, he also noted that the character would live well into January before, I assume, heading back to the swamp. In the end, the real purpose of the Christmas creature was to be another monster for the King of Memphis, Jerry Lawler, to slay. A monster of the week, as it were, similar to the way The Undertaker was booked in his early years. The final story I have for today comes from the December 20th, 1999 episode of Raw. This was an interesting period in WWE, as following a major swerve in which Triple H and Stephanie McMahon had banished Vince in storyline, 
creating the McMahon Helmsley regime, which ran roughshod over the vast majority of storylines at the time. Triple H would use his newfound power to humiliate one of his most fierce rivals of the time, Mankind. On the December 20th 99 Raw, Mankind would be booked in a boiler room brawl with, of all people, Santa Claus. Any long-time fan of Mick Foley will know about his absolute, genuine love of Christmas, and so this was designed to mess with him. To make sure Mankind entered the match, the Mean Street Posse blindsided him and threw him into the boiler room, where Saint Nick was waiting, this time not played by Balls Mahoney. Mankind reasons with Santa that he should just walk out of the boiler room and win, only for him to be ambushed by three more Santas. It's not entirely clear who these men were, but Foley did a number on them. On his way out of the boiler room, Mankind is attacked by two more Santas, who turn out to be Road Dog and Billy Gunn. Foley would once again get the upper hand and attempt to leave the boiler room, before he is attacked by one last Santa, who turns out to be Triple H himself, who leaves the boiler room and claims victory. On the following week's Raw, Triple H wouldn't rest until one of his most credible challengers was out of the company. So he would book Mankind in a match against his friend at the time, The Rock, in a pink slip on a pole match, with the winner keeping their job. The Rock would win the match, leaving Mankind to be fired just two days after Christmas, but the rest of that story is for another day. Thank you for watching yet another wrestling channel. If you enjoyed this, please comment, like or subscribe.